I won't forget that morning if I live to be 102. The city is Los Angeles. Not too long ago. But long enough that the bean fields outnumbered the freeways. This is about a murder that really happened. Nobody made it up. As far as I know, there's never been another one before or since. Quite like it. Ever. Started right here. These vacant lots on Norton Avenue. An old man and his grandson taking a walk. But it's a day you can bet both of them will never forget. A stick of candy. If he hopped to the barber shop. Hey, slow down there. Button up that sweater. I don't want you catching any sniffles. <laughs> one for you and one for me and one for Amos and Andy. Grandpa, look! The Black Dahlia murder still haunts me. I tell him no. Then I stop and think. Maybe haunt ain't the right word. But not a day goes by that I don't remember this day. January 15th, 1947. My partner, Finest Brown, and I walked in that door through the squad room, like we did hundreds of times before, not knowing that this time we'd be taking on something that had stick with us the rest of our lives and after all these years I can still hear Captain Donahoe's voice Hanson yes Captain empty lot Norton Avenue between 39th and Coliseum one block east of Crenshaw the Merton Park section sounds bad Harry both you and Finest get over there quick Are you with the police? Yeah, detectives. You got in Porter written all over you. How'd you get here? Uh, I got a buddy in the crime lab. He called me. What's up? Look for yourself. Good she. Highly. Hi, Harry. I see the crime lab didn't waste any time. You got anything I can move on fast? Somebody made two trips. Yeah. Well, let's get the coroner down here. And, uh, notify dispatch to have some cars uh, block off the area. What kind of a butcher would do a thing like that? Not exactly a butcher. Wonder who she is. Hate to think, Finus. Somebody's little girl. Grandmama! Grandmama! Betty! What in the world are you doing coming out in all this cold and snow? <laughs> I just had to come over and tell you, Grandmama. Oh, you're fit to bust, child. You just settled down. Do you know what time it is? I know what time it is. I know what day it is, and I know what week it is. <coughs> oh, didn't I tell you? Come <coughs> sit down, and for heaven's sake, don't talk too fast. <coughs> you know, with your asthma, it makes you short of breath. <coughs> Aren't you going to be late for work, Betty? Oh, Grandma, I'm not going to work today. I already phoned and told him so. Well, work's the only reason to be stepping foot outdoors on a bit of cold day like this. I'm warm all over. And after today, you can have all the snow in Maine. What has got you so wound up? What have you got there? I got California, Grandmama. Right here in my hand. I got sunshine and oranges and, and palm trees. Now, 
Settle down and tell me what this is all about. He sent me money to come. My daddy, he finally sent it. You've been writing to your father? Sure, why not? Still my father, isn't he? There's lots of difference between a sire and a father. He was never father to you. Oh, Grandmama, look. No, I don't want to see that. Grandmama, it's not a letter. I'm sorry, Petty. Well, you haven't seen your father since you were six years old. Well, it's high time. That's what I told him. And you don't know what he's... What his situation is. You can't just uh, pick up and move in on him after all this time. But he asked me to, Grandmama. I just can't believe it's... Look, there. See? A postal money order. Elizabeth Short. See? Miracle, they remember, Janae. Betty. It's so far. California. Oh, Grandmama. It's sunny out there. All the time. There's no rain and no snow. I'd be able to breathe. And I wouldn't have to usher in that musty old theater anymore. Looking at the lights on other people on the screen. I'd be out there in movie land. <laughs> and who knows? They might even turn the bright lights on me someday. <laughs> Can't you give me your ETA? Come on, Lee. Well, there was moisture under the body, which means both of her was placed there sometime after after dewfall. So I'll check with the weather department, find out the time dewfall. Well, I got it, Sarge. You want more for the morgue? Yeah. Fix up for Jane Doe ID card on her. You can roll her print to the morgue. I'll get a missing person to see if she's one of theirs. Sergeant Hanson, are you gonna have your artist do a likeness of her for ID? Can't print a picture of that. Sure, we'll do it like this. Before one o'clock, we can get a quarter of a million pictures of her on the street by sunset. Well, I tell you what. Here is little two. You can print a picture of the killer. You notice something, Harry? Not one drop of blood. Not one. Have Ray Pinker do a complete chemistry on her. We need a squad down here to do a door-to-door -door check for 20 blocks. How about this area? Every inch and go for a hole. Lady? What the hell could you do to make anybody that mad? station at night? Well, I, I wanted to surprise you. Well, you did that all right enough. Huh? Well, when you said you wanted to come to California, you didn't say anything about uh, moving in, I mean. Well, I... I guess I just assumed uh, that... I guess I sort of figured you were uh, older. Now, when I set the fare out, uh, I kind of thought that's all you wanted. Traveling money, you know? Oh, well, sure. I mean, look, I just stopped in Vallejo first to say hello. <laughs> you know, till I locate something. You only got one suitcase? Lucky to have one, I guess. Don't expect me to start buying your clothes. Oh, no, I wouldn't expect anything like that. Look, I sent you the money. But just don't get the idea there's more where that came from. I appreciate it. I really do. Yeah, well... And it'll be just till you get something, then. Staying with me, I mean. Well, I, I sort of thought maybe I'd, um... Look, I mean I'm busy. I work. I haven't got time to take care of kids. Kids? I'm 18. 
Yeah, well, so you can work and keep house for a while. But it's just until, though. Just until. Sure. Just until. Look, I'll... I'll probably go to Hollywood. A little later. Sure. They all go to Hollywood. Dear Grandmama, couldn't wait to write and tell you how happy Daddy was to see me. The weather is beautiful and people are so warm and friendly. I feel right at home with Daddy. See, you didn't have to worry. The California air is so clear. I really feel alive. By the very nature of this case, the coroner's jury is going to want the most meticulous post-mortem. It'll take some time. I need answers, Lee. As soon as they come to you. I don't even know who she is yet. Well, I can tell you this much before any coroner even starts. This is not the work of some mindless butcher. The victim was carefully bisected by someone with surgical skill who took his time doing it. That's what she could have looked like. She'd been someplace else last night. What a beautiful girl she must have been. One thing I noticed might help you. From appearances, the body was completely exsanguinated. What's that? Exsanguinated, completely drained of blood. Impossible to achieve just any place. Need a constantly flowing source of water, like a bathtub, shower, big wash area of some kind. Well, that's the sign of man of the morgue here, Finest. Don, Freddy's on his way. No one looks at the body without police authorization. Uh, let's spare the press the gory details, Finest. I don't want to make it a real big thing out of this. Another hour and without every crackpot in town. With enough misinformation to fill the city dump. What does the fingerprint section say? Nothing yet. I want this thing wrapped up neat and clean and fast before the newspapers turn it into a picnic. Well, you're reading my mind, Cap. Good. So why don't the two of you go out there and see what this is stirred up in the street? Dig around and talk to some people. Come on, you cough up. Dang, took my neck off. Whoa, whoa. Hey, look at there. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. I, I just come into this great fortune at a gumball machine there. Uh, see that? That's a, that's a genuine ruby ring. This must be your lucky day. Uh, w w wait a minute. Uh, what do you want? Well, I, I just wanted you to share in my inheritance. Inheritance? <laughs> this genuine ruby ring. Now, that's, that's a real family heirloom. That's been handed down from... My, my great-great-grandmother. And, and I want you to have it. There's a sort of a, a memento of our first meeting. Look, I think... Maybe no, no, no. I, I want you to have it. Here, look here. Right there. There you go. See that? Genuine ruby glass, I'd say. Oh, what do you want to talk like that for? I mean, us being engaged and all. You work kind of fast, don't you? Well, there's, there's a war on. So I heard. Can't you find where it is? Uh, buy you a little rum for the tummy? I don't drink. Smoke? No. Nope. <laughs> Next you're going to tell me you're a virgin. No, I'm not. Because <gasps> I don't have to tell you anything. Hey, where are you going? Just walking. Oh, good. Uh, hey, why don't you and me go someplace? No, we're not going to go any place. They're going to ship me out pretty soon. You're going to be sorry. I'll cry all night. Night after night. Hey, come on, honey. I'm a nice fella. Look, please. Oh, yeah, you say please so pretty. Why don't you say pretty please? Hey, Lloyd! Lloyd! Hey, what you got here? Shove off, will you? What? What? So, so where are you from? Maine. Ain't no kidding, so am I. Really? 
Yeah. You lying swab. I told you. That's shut up. Well, you're, but you're not. Hey, wait a minute, honey. Hey, look here. You ain't walking around here for nothing. Hey, why don't you and me go out and have a little drink, a little hey, fun? Let huh? me take care of you, sweet. Come, Okay. Yeah. Really, I... 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 There you go. Well, this is your hat, Bullethead. <laughs> oh, oh. Come on, I'll buy you a beer. Oh, hey, well, what about your sweetie? Uh, cheap tease. She'll get hers, huh? <laughs> She'll get hers. She's gonna get hers. <laughs> Sweetheart of Sigma Chi or something. You were somebody's sweetheart, all right, weren't you, huh? Or maybe just a tramp, huh? Is that what you were? No, not with them looks. Are you all right, Aaron? No, Finest, I ain't all right. I got a rock in my stomach. Better lay off the chili for a while. Who are you? Well, tell us. Who are you? She don't even want to tell us who she is. person says she's not one of their missing persons. Okay, I give up. Who is our black-haired beauty? There's no prints on her, Harry. Not here, anyway. We're running sets to San Diego, San Francisco, Washington. Ah, it takes days to mail fingerprints, especially to Washington. Can you fix the time? After due fall, which was 4 a.m. Uh, traces of weed, other particles indicate the murder was very neat. He scrubbed everything clean. I found bristles from the brush. We're checking them for origin. Excuse me, Sergeant. There's a woman out here who may have seen the car. Oh, her I can use. Bring her in. Mr. Walker? Mrs. Walker here was on Norton yesterday morning about 5.30. Oh, well, I, I wasn't exactly on Norton. I, my house backs up on the other street. I was feeding my cat. She has an alarm clock for her stomach. And I just happened to look over to that spot on Norton. And you saw a car there. A, a car pulled up to the curb. I couldn't see much. It was, it was still kind of dark. And there were all those weeds. What kind of car? Oh, uh, I, I'd say a Chevy. Probably from before the war. 37 or 38. He was only parked there a couple of minutes. You say he. Uh, did you see the driver? No, I didn't. Well, how about the license number? Did you notice the color of the car? No, I really didn't. Take a statement. Thank you. Okay, let's... Let's start when time's in place. Dew point, 4 a.m. At least we know she was out all night. Night after night, who knows where. No more, and that's final. I'm not doing anything wrong, Daddy. Not doing very much right, either. 
dishes in the sink, laundry always piled up. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I gave in and sent you the money to come out here. I'll get a job. I'll, I'll pay you back. It just... No. I put the money on your dresser for your fare back home. Daddy, I don't want to go back home. You don't know what you want. So you'll do as you're told. I want you packed and on your way back to Maine before I get home from work tonight. Oh, Daddy, please. I'll be late for work. from five to nine hours, according to the coroner's report. That puts the murder sometime after midnight. And the uh, operation sometime after that. Sergeant, there's another guy out there asking to view the body, Jack Owens. Thinks it might be his runaway girlfriend. Okay, you had a complete idea. Check it out. Death caused by shock and hemorrhaging caused by the two deep lacerations, almost ear to ear, and concussion from blows to the head, no fractures. And uh, how long would you say it took, um, you know, for the rest of it after she died? Hard to say. Very skillful job, carefully done. Could have taken the surgeon long as an hour. Harry? Yeah, boys. Just got a call from the Venus area. Somebody says a guy out there was trying several places to rent a room with a bathtub in it night before last. Better put a crew on it. Try to pin it down. Of course, a bathtub's only one possibility. Give me some more. Could have been done, say, on an embalming table in the mortuary. Very possibly. Notify Central. We're holding a guy in Hollywood at Yucca and Franklin in the alley. They'd better get up here and talk to him. Brown. Yeah, he's right here. Hanson? He tried to steal my bag. He tried to steal it right in broad daylight. That's him. He tried to rob me. Can't even walk the street. It's over here, sir. Broad daylight. He tried to rob me in broad daylight. Yeah, wait over here, ma'am. What well, for? Sure. I'm in a hurry. Uh, you got wait him. over here, please. Can you give me your statement, please? We were cruising by just in time to see him make a run for his car. This is it, the 38 Chevrolet. Take a look. Well, well. I see you read your locker room bulletins. That's his car. Look like it? The right year and make. Could be a bingo for us. You look like the inquisitive type. I suppose you already asked him about them stains in the back seat. Yeah, he says they're chicken blood. Chicken blood? Yeah. That ain't all. We shook him down, we found a switchblade knife. Got it in the car. Sharp enough to shave with. You sure don't look much like a surgeon. You looking for a surgeon? Wish you knew. Like I said, I was standing there, and for daylight he comes up to me and tries, Hey, what do you need me for? You got him. I mean, you saw it with your own eyes. He's the one. All right, so I tried to steal her from a shopping bag. Or maybe you think if you cop a plea like that, some judge will make us feed you for a year and we'll forget about you. You know what you think, Redfield? What could be worse? What, what are y'all trying to lay off on me? Let's start again. What were you doing in the alley? Same things as the rats. It's trying to find something to eat. I just drove in from Texas. I ain't had nothing to eat in a day and a half. I figure I could pick up an easy shopping bag and the old lady put up a struggle. And that's all you wanted from the nice old lady? Her shopping bag? I was hungry. That's the truth. I mean, I come from all... Harry? All the way in from, from El Paso, Texas, straight through. Didn't stop nowhere. The hell you say? I don't say. Ray Pinker says. And those stains on the rear seat of his car... Well, they're blood, all right. 
not human blood. You're going to tell me it's chicken blood? I'm going to tell you it's possible. Uh, we checked out that part of the story. Redfield was canned from a handyman job on a chicken ranch outside of El Paso three weeks ago. Caught stealing the merchandise. Well, ain't that great. Uniform division just pans as a killer. And what does he end up being? Chicken thief. I give up. What about the woman? Her. Her shopping bag was loaded with articles from a six-block area. She's got a shoplifting record as long as your sleeve. Oh, I must be getting tired, Finest. Why was I hoping it was him? Car, I guess. Well, scratch one, 1938 Chevy sedan. Want a lift? No, thanks. Um, uh, where are you going? Just up ahead. I, I got off the bus. It's the wrong place. Well, um, Camp Clark. That's where I'm headed. Come on, get in. No, thank you. Walking doesn't cost anything. Did your uh, mother ever tell you that uh, something could happen to you out here, walking out here all alone? She also told me something might happen getting into cars with strangers, too. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, I got no tricks. Nothing up my sleeve. Just, you know, trying to do a good deed. You gonna let that car sit there, burning up half a ration coupon? Look, if you're planning on running out of gas, I think I'd rather be walking. I don't wait a minute, come on. I'm probably gonna tell the guys at the camp, you know, that I can't even get a pretty girl to come along for a ride. Why don't you just forget you ever saw me? And that way you don't have to tell them anything. I have to be dead in the ground before I forget I saw you. Is that a fact? What's your name? Beth. Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. I'm in. <laughs> now that we're all friends, how about it? See, my name really isn't Elizabeth. You got the wrong girl. Oh, wait a minute. Let me at least give your suitcase a lift. I'll leave it at the camp for you. You know, look, me and my suitcase, we travel together. Well, that does it. They're going to take away my good conduct medal for sure. Well. <laughs> you don't have to get to Camp Clark right away. Uh, I know all the comfy places where uh, camp girls like to bed down at. No. Oh, come on, don't play goody two shoes with me way out in the middle of nowhere on the way to an army camp. Look, let me go. Give me that. Come on, way let out in the go. middle of nowhere. Please, this is on the way to Give me army that. Camp. Hey, well, what's the matter there? You all right? See that she is? Girls like that don't need help. Get back in the car, Albert. Dear Grandmama, I met the nicest young soldier today who used to be in the motion picture business. He said he could tell by the way I walked and talked that with just a few acting lessons, I should have no trouble at all in finding work in the movies. I'll be able to pay for my own acting lessons because he's already lined up this job for me, where I'll be working steady. Come on now, how about something for the working press, huh? Yeah, my pants. Bebo, we're not holding out on as soon as we get a lead that leads anywhere, we'll let you know. Look, they sent me down here to check into the surgical angle. Now, have you got any suggestions? Oh, I know. I ain't no doctor. Well, my doctor happens to be the city editor, and he sent me down here to exercise for the next edition. 
Why don't you do push-ups in the hall? I hate to remind you, but this is known in murder circles as the late morning of the second day. Yeah. Well, this is known in cop circles as my private office. Out. Out, out. Excuse my back, Sarge. Hey, Harry. Easy, huh? Bebo Means is one of the best reporters in town. And a friend. <sighs> yeah, I know. But I have to get a job so I can stay. Please. Well, uh, we can't change the rules. Besides, I'm, uh, I'm not really much interested in men anyway, since my husband was killed overseas. Oh, sorry. Well, uh, I suppose. Uh, but you'll have to keep your guard up here. You know, uh, you're a very pretty girl, Elizabeth. I checked the picture out with Vice. I drew a blank. Nobody recognized her as a pro or an amateur. Yeah? Well, you don't have to look so pleased. Hmm? Nothing. And speaking of nothing... Not exactly nothing, Finest. Every time we find out something she wasn't, we're narrowing her down to what she was. I'm not so sure. She's beginning to give me the willies. Look at her. Yeah. Can't figure out if she's trying to ask us something. Tell us something. Is there something you want to tell me, Elizabeth? No. You're not in any kind of trouble, are you? No, it's... it's isn't anything like that. Well, that's a relief. Well, you're the one bright spot around here, Elizabeth. Well, some of these girls at the PX will never amount to much. I mean, not the way they carry on with every Tom, Dick, and Harry in uniform. Well, they kid me a lot. I don't mind it. Really. Something is bothering you. Want to tell me? Well, it's nothing, really. It's just... Well, it's my acting lessons. I didn't know you were taking acting lessons. Well, I'm not exactly. Just yet. But I'm going to. I've been doing a lot of reading. Getting ready. You're not thinking of leaving us, are you? Oh, no. It's a long way off yet. I like it here at the camp. And you've been so kind to me. Well, that pleases me a whole lot, Elizabeth. I mean, I hate to lose you, but... You know now, you just might do it. Who knows? Of course, if you become a big actress, they'll want to change your name to something catchy, like, uh... I wonder what they will call you. Camp Clark Cutie. A main reason for the steady increase in business at PX1 is the attractive presence of Elizabeth Short. <laughs> I like that. Jealous, jealous, girls. Uh, have either of you seen Elizabeth? Not likely. Miss Camp Clark Cutie left last night. What? Mm-hmm. Bag and baggage. Right after she got that publicity. But, but, but that's not like her. I mean, we, we were talking, well, well, just yesterday about, about how she liked it here. If you want to know the truth, I never seen anything like her. Never said as much as hello to a single soldier in all the months she worked here. Well, did she uh, say anything? She said she was threatened by a soldier. She probably said no when she meant maybe. Or she said yes and didn't know what she was talking about. All right, all right. Nice, gentle girl like her. She don't have to be afraid of being pawed all the time anyway. If she touched anything the Bureau knows about Harry, we'll know who she is. 20 minutes. After our Washington office gets a wire photo of her prints. Sure appreciate your help, Jimmy. It takes days to get fingerprint reports through the mails. Don't mention it. Be nice if us public servants could afford one of them gadgets. Solve this one. Maybe the city council will get you one for your birthday. Yeah, solve this one. Maybe I'll get you jokers off my back. Look who's complaining. The wire services are on my back every hour of the day. Suddenly this little bean patch called Los Angeles is on the map. 
I tell you. One girl dead in headlines. A couple of years ago, the whole world was killing itself. Right now, they're only interested in the name that goes with the picture of those ten little fingertips. Shot in the dark, Harry. Unless your mysterious Miss X left her fingerprints somewhere in the country. Well, let's give her a roll. in your lip, kid. Please don't call me kid. It's okay. Um, drink up, baby. Look, I really don't like it. Well, lots of things we don't like till we grow up, huh? A few of these, and then we'll, uh, we'll teach you to like a few things, huh? I told you, I'm not 21. You, uh, you look 21 to me. Don't she look 21 to you, huh? She doesn't look 21 to me. You better come to the station with me. Come on. trouble before. Honest. Don't worry. You're going to be all right, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Ann Short. 22. Uh, Portland, Maine. San Diego. And more recently, Los Angeles. Suspect apprehended. Name it Jack Owen. Notify Central LAPD. Tell them we got their cut up safe and sound. Come down to San Pedro and get them. It ain't worth a trip down to Pedro, Cap. You're absolutely sure. Well, not unless you want to start booking drunks for talking in their sleep. I'm ready to book anybody caught sleeping in this case. We checked Jack Owen out here in L.A. when he asked to look at the body yesterday. He's a ship's, what he called, navigator from San Diego. Every now and then. Thatcher. 
Well, we ain't singling you out, Mr. Finley. We're asking the same cooperation from every mortuary in town. Really? Well, I think you people are are being just a little too, too imaginative. Well, you know, uh, we got to humor our police chemist and autopsy surgeon. See, they tell us it's real possible that the final bisection and uh, exangulation of the body took place on a mortician's embalming table. So we need the names of all present and past employees, the last couple of years, say. Oh, we got to check them out, you know, police records, uh, any known association with the victim. It's a check we're doing all over town, a whole lot of places. Just part of the routine in a murder case like this one. You're being released on probation, Elizabeth. And one of the conditions, of course, is no more drinking. Don't worry. It makes me a little sick, anyway. Just sign this. Oh. All right. Now, here's your bus ticket from San Diego to Maine. You do have someone who will pick you up in Portland. Oh, sure. Plenty of people glad to. Grandmama. Oh, I... I almost forgot. What's this? Ten dollars. Just a little spending money for your trip. From the San Diego neighborhood house. Thank you. Thank you very much. Elizabeth, a lot of girls take one wrong step like this. It makes them bitter, and they keep right on going to worse things. I don't want to see that happen to you. You're a sweet, warm girl with your whole future ahead of you. I don't know what it is. The war, oh, everything's so wild and temporary. Don't you get caught up in it. Go back east. Be a good girl. Promise? Sure. It'll be nice to get home again. I can't wait to get out of California. Get on that bus back to Maine. Dear Grandmama, I'm sorry I've been so long in writing, but exciting things keep happening one right after another. I've met some wonderful people here who are connected with motion pictures. They begged me to come to Hollywood right away and are being very helpful in seeing that I meet the right people who can help get me started. Of course, I'll only have small parts at first, but I'm so glad I came out. Maybe a break, Harry. Men we had checking the transportation terminals. Looks like they may have scored in a baggage locker at the downtown bus station. Found Elizabeth's short suitcase. Thought you might like to be here for the opening. It's hers, all right. Yeah. Look at those letters. She didn't have very many favorite colors, did she? Love, Doc. Could be our surgeon. Looks like lipstick. Even if we can trace it, what do we got? Some joker named Doc who can knock over all the milk bottles with three baseballs. Start a catalog in that mail. Right. Names, dates, train addresses. Funny. Strange funny. Would you look at this? For a while there, it was... It's like she never existed. Now it's... Like we got everything she was. Dumped out in the desk. Like she... She checked her whole world at a bus station. A suitcase. Well, maybe we'll know more after we've gone through all this fan mail. Whoa, 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 
whoa, whoa, whoa, wait a sec. See the sign? You want me to read it to you? Huh? Well, no, I just thought if I could just get into the studio and uh, for a while just to watch. Well, that's the reason I'm out here. To see that you don't get in there. You understand? Savvy? Comprende? Look, you do hire people, don't you? Just to stand around in the background? Just be in the movies? That's why they're called extras, I think. They have so many extras, we don't know what to do with them. <laughs> Look, please. I'm willing to do anything to learn. Don't give me that, baby. This place is already full up with girls who are willing to do anything. I didn't mean that. Well, if you meant anything else, then I might suggest uh, waiting tables, slinging hash, or uh, selling lingerie. Thanks, honey. My pleasure. Are there any places around here to stay that don't cost too much? Look on the board. I mean, if a two-buck bedroom isn't beneath a big star like you. You can't expect much for two bucks a day. You mind closing the door? Oh, you can put your stuff over there. You in the business? What? The business, picture business. Oh. Uh. Yeah, a few things. My, uh. Agent died and. Yeah, so did mine, only he doesn't know it yet. Do you always wear basic black? Oh, will you two shut up? I'm trying to sleep. I mean, is that your shtick? Uh. Well, I'm, uh. in mourning. My husband was. Killed in the war. He was an Air Force major. Oh, come on. Hey, don't mind her. She thinks sleeping all day gets rid of the bags you get from running around all night. Uh, this is Miss Black Market Hose, in case you run short. Well, actually, I'm kind of on a strict budget. Oh, money shouldn't be a problem for you. Uh, Beth. Beth Short. I mean, not with uh, your assets. Dear Betty, we are all so proud that you are getting such a good start in the movies. The minister's wife said she thought she saw you in the background of an Alan Ladd picture, but that she couldn't be sure. My grandmother. Well, none of the studios or guilds ever heard of her. You got anything on the next address? You know, after she moved out of that uh, two-buck-a-day sorority house. Well, I'll be. You got something? According to the date on that envelope, that was her next address. Miles Harmander. Now, she had to be strong to hold her own with six in a room. But I wonder what kind of tough cookie she had to turn into to move in with a big-time promoter like Miles Harmander. She ain't talking. But I got a feeling we're getting close. Close. To the real Elizabeth Short. Harmander's house. Yeah, this is Miles Harmander's house. <laughs> uh, we're his uh, police dogs. We keep strangers away. Oh. Well, I love dogs. Maybe that's why Miles invited me to stay here. Oh. Well, I'm uh, Susan Winters. If you're moving in, I can. Uh, Miles said that my room would overlook the pool. Well, mine does. 
But the rooms on the other side of the house have a beautiful view of Hollywood, too. Oh, good. Then you won't mind. I know I'm going to love staying here. Look, uh, we're kind of all for one and one for all around Don't here, you know? Don't let me change a thing. I probably won't be here very long, anyway. Well, I guess none of us is permanent, huh? No. Grandmama used to say, nothing alive and pretty is ever permanent. Hmm? Grandmama was right, I guess. so long? Maybe if Miles Harmander gave us a call when he saw the picture in the paper, we'd been here soon. Iran? Miles is in San Francisco on business. He has a lot of theaters, you know. But if you want to know anything about Beth Short, I'll tell you what I know, which is a big fat zero. You knew her, Miss... Uh... Winters. Susan Winters. Well, Susan Winters, how well did you know Elizabeth Short? Not well. Not well at all. I doubt if you'll find anyone who knew much about her. How about her boyfriends? Anyone in particular? She had a different boyfriend every night. She went steady seven times a week. Do you remember any of their names? Pick every third name in the phone book. All you girls uh, live here with Harmony? Miles let some of us girls who are in the business move in here between pictures. Hmm. You're um, between pictures? Yeah. How long did Elizabeth Short live here between pictures? She was never in the business. Never. I know. Yeah, so do we. How long was she here? It was about a month or so. She was always on the move. Kind of like someone was after her. Why do you say that? Well, she was jumpy. Like if someone was at the door that she couldn't see or, or the phone rang, she was jumpy. She never said anything about uh, who might be after her. Who knows? In no time, she was out on the town almost every night. Listen, is it true? Did they really torture her before they killed her? Short. Uh, yeah? 
you know. Hmm? I tied her down for a while. She didn't like that. I wanted her to die slowly. Actually, she died much too fast. You watch. Just so you'll know, this call is genuine. I'll mail you a few souvenirs of Beth's that I took from my purse just before we said our goodbyes. Watch your mail. Hello. 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 Well, here's our seventh confession. No dice. You can't even answer one of our three key questions. Somewhere out there, I find us. Somebody's laughing at us. He's got the answer to all three of them questions, and he's laughing at us. Because he's the murderer. Hanson. Yeah, Jimmy. Harry, I think I just talked to the killer. Yeah. Yeah? Wait a minute, Jimmy. Find us and I'll be right over. Hold all this, huh? Okay. Contact. He answered all three questions? That's him. We're the only ones that know that. Let's keep it that way. You just keep on talking. We'll find you for a girl. First, a little heart-to-heart -heart talk with Jimmy Richardson, and then we got a letter to intercept. The Los Angeles newspapers, here's a few of Beth's belongings. We'll let her to follow. Well, there's Social Security, identification, birth certificate, a few souvenirs of Beth's. Just like he promised. This envelope belongs to our killer. No doubt about it, Cap. Whoever tucked them things in there also took Elizabeth Short apart after torturing and killing her. He told Jimmy Richardson enough to prove he could answer our three questions. Even Jimmy doesn't realize that. Well... Would you look at this? What is it? That's her handwriting. After reading all those letters, I can tell it in my sleep. The rest of the addresses are in somebody else's hand. And look at the name on the cover. Hey. Let's get him in here this time. I'd like to know just how Elizabeth got this. And I want to know when she got it. some new interesting people. That'd do it. All you have to do is start calling up some of Miles' friends and bothering them. He'll throw us all out of here. I imagine there are a few people in this book who just as soon not have it known that they're friends of Miles at all. Hey, Beth! You know what he's gonna say! I haven't seen it since that day. Did you write that in there, Mr. Harmoner? Uh, I, I never wrote this. I don't know any doc. You say you rented rooms in your house to aspiring and actresses. Oh, well, to help them out when they're out of work, you know. A sort of humanitarian gesture. I get it. How much rent did you charge them? Now, wait a minute. I'll wait all day. I like being with a humanitarian. My personal life is my own business. Yeah? How much did you know about Elizabeth Short's personal life? Nothing. 
Nothing at all. She's a very strange girl. So bloody secretive. And I don't think even her closest friends knew anything about her. The last time you've seen her was August? Mm, September. The last I heard, some of my... Uh, Tenants. They were forwarding her mail to some tacky Oxnard luncheonette. <laughs> there are no black flowers. If you knew anything at all about flowers, you'd know there was no such thing as a black dahlia. That's where you're wrong. You see, you got beautiful black petals and yeah, <laughs> black stem. <laughs> some stems. You don't see many stems like that. No, you're a black dahlia, all right? You embarrass me. My mom's a movie star, too. The lady said you're embarrassing her. Oh, dear, I forgot my wallet. That's okay. You trust me? Put it on your bill. He don't have to trust you. I trust you. Oh, you don't have to do that. That's all right. My pleasure. It goes on my expense account anyway. Well, oh, thank you. Say, uh, would you like to join me for something a little stronger down the street, eh? Well, uh... What do you say? Okay. Just let me go powder my nose, all right? Sure. What's so funny, Sonny? There's no powder room here, mister. <laughs> One of these days, she's gonna hustle the wrong dollar. Oh, that's where you're wrong, mister. She knows what she's doing, our black dahlia. Well, them reporters beat us up to Oxnard. Can you believe it? Black dahlia? It'll never catch on. Uh, they can name her anything they want, just as long as they name her killer. I'll uh, personally award them the Pulitzer Prize and a, an expense-paid weekend on Catalina. If it's a contest, can I enter? No, you've got to be able to spell. What's this hogwash you have about a black daddy? You didn't like it? Gee, my editor loved it. Before sundown, every paper in the country will be using it. Well, then they got any sense. There ain't no such thing as a black flower. That's funny, because that's exactly what she told the guy who hung the name on her. Yeah? Well, I'll get around too, you know. Probably didn't make no sense to her either. Well, maybe it fits. Flower that never was, and a girl who didn't know who she was. Ooh, or maybe, uh, maybe just a way to sell papers, huh? Make a reporter named Bevo Means famous. Not a chance. Long after you and I are turned out to pasture and forgotten, Harry. The black daddy will still be famous. I'll settle for that. I can make her killer just as famous. I, uh, hear you're looking for someone named Doc, is that right? Who told you that? Lady friend. So? Did your lady friend have any other hot tips? No. But speaking of females, I hope you're not overlooking an angle. I sure hope so, too, Bevo. Maybe I ought to check with you every morning. Now, look, I've been out pounding the bricks, and I've just got a hunch it was a woman who killed the black guy. Yeah? Well, we've been pounding the same bricks, Bevo. And there ain't a single blasted brick that's told us whether it was a man, woman, soldier, sailor. All right, all right, Harry. She was out there real good or real bad. I don't follow you. She's killed by a devil, Bebo. If we had one clue, I'd go straight into hell to get him. Nuts, mister. Or detective, sergeant, whatever you want to call yourself, you're nuts. If you want to arrest me for a personal opinion, you're nuts. You know who I'm talking about? 
big drinking, curly headed star, rested for marijuana. I hear Elizabeth was a friend of a friend of his. No. No, maybe, or no positive? No, I don't know. Why are you bugging me? Look, I've got a day's work as an extra. Don't foul me up. I ain't bugging you, Miss Winters. I want to know everyone she knew that you know. Well, we had a lot of very close mutual acquaintances here in Magic Land. Give it to me straight. She's getting to you, isn't she? <sighs> Even dead, she's getting to you. <laughs> I think that's funny. I want names. She is. She's getting you all worked up, just like she got somebody else all worked up. Names! I don't know any names. Miss Winters. What if whoever killed her might want to kill you? Hmm. No chance. What makes you so sure? Because I don't fool around. I'm no tease. Oh. Elizabeth was a tease? Well, she still is, isn't she? Look at you. Score one more for the Black Dahlia. That'll be enough. Oh, don't you wish. Look at you. You're hooked. I know the look. Maybe things would look different if I was to question you downtown. It's all right with me. I'll bet you even have a picture of her in your office. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Miss Winters. I'm coming. I'll be right there. Listen, um... Okay, so you're a smart girl. I suppose you tell me why I got her picture in my office instead of yours. What do you mean? How come she's dead and you're alive? Well, excuse me for living. I told you. She was a tease. What else was she? I don't know. Did she lie? Oh, she I don't deal? know. I don't know. Look, I don't know. Honestly. I mean, it seemed like the longer I knew her, the less I knew her. I mean, she, she was the kind of a girl who, well, sometimes she'd be warm and friendly, like she was going to open up to you, and then other times, forget it. Cold as ice, like she just met you. I don't know, it seemed like she was a lot of different girls all rolled into one. See, so, uh, I want to find out which one got herself killed. You'll never find out. Live in secret, die in secret. You'll never find out who killed her. I killed her. I said I killed her, and I'd do it again. She had it coming, that little tramp. Yeah. So, uh, just um, so as we can put it in the record, uh, how many times did you shoot Elizabeth Short? Five times. Four in the stomach, and once right between our sneaky little eyes. And then I cut her up. I don't like the way Hanson got himself involved in this case, Linus. Any suggestions? Assign us to traffic for a while. At least we can see what direction something is going. I'm serious. So is Hanson. Something in the manual, isn't there? About dedication? Big difference between dedication and obsession. <laughs> don't I know it. Try pulling a few shifts with a partner who can't see anything funny in girl jokes anymore, Cap. How'd the confession go? Just great. If you're looking for a female member of the police pistol team... Oh, not another one. Regular Annie Oakley. Locate the father? Yeah. Skid Row. What do you have to say? I told him his daughter was murdered. He said, so what? Hello? Yes? Where? How long ago? Got. Santa Barbara. Looks like Elizabeth Short almost made it in the movies after all. Hi, 
honey. You've been standing around here all day. Well, she was... He was supposed to meet me here. Um, I was counting on a place to stay. Don't you have any place to go to? Maybe you could stay the night with us. I'll call my mother. Dear Grandmama, the movie strike has made it hard to find jobs in pictures right now, so I'm working in a hospital here in Santa Barbara. It's interesting work. Well, as I said, she never worked a day the whole time she was here, as far as I know. Whole month. <laughs> I don't know how she spent her time. But if she did work, I never saw a dollar or a dime of it. Mother finally had to ask her to leave. We didn't have the room, you know? Or the money. I was making $31 a week and feeding three of us already. Did she, uh, leave any of her belongings here? Well, if you could call it a belonging, why don't you, uh, show him the ring you found? I found it under the bed. I know it was hers, though, because I saw her looking at it one night. Under the light, like it was real. It's just junk. How do you account for anybody keeping a thing like that around? Well, one person's junk's another person's treasure. I guess. Did you bring any of her boyfriends here? Uh, what I mean, uh, did you ever meet any of them? No. She was very secretive about who she went out with. She let on. There were lots of them, though. Oh, who can say? With her, you never could tell. Could have been one, could have been a hundred. Well, when you asked her to leave, did uh, anybody pick her up? No. No, she just packed that black bag of hers and took off without even so much as a goodbye. The bus station. She said she was going to take a bus. Yeah, this looks like her, but I didn't sell her any bus ticket. You're positive of that. I don't think she came here to take a bus. Well, what'd you come here for? You use the telephone? She hung around half the day putting a bushel of nickels in the payphone over there. You must kept pretty good eye on her. Yeah, well, you know, she wasn't hard to look at, especially in that black dress. Is she really that black, uh, what is it? Dahlia. Jeez. So she used the phone a lot. Did she talk to anyone, meet anyone? Well, I guess she got her number. What makes you say that? Well, I see through the door there. This guy drives up and she went out and got in his car. Attention, please. What sort of fellow was he? Oh, good-looking young guy, you know, sort of average, good looks, late 20s, dark hair. Did you get a look at the color? Green 41 Ford. I remember because I almost bought one just like it myself. 41. You wouldn't happen to know the license number? No. But, yeah. What? It had one of those... Doctor gizmos, you know, those shields that the doctors put on their license plates? Finest, I got a feeling we're on the home stretch. Dark. Dr. Wallace Cobbin? L.A. Police. I want to talk to you. Try to get down. What is this? This? This is the end of the line. Wallace, what's going on out here? It's all right, Mother. He's under arrest. Or for the murder of Elizabeth Ann Short. Or maybe he was one of them who called her Black Daddy. Oh, she was prettier than this, as I remember. Of course, the winters in Maine do a lot to her. So I've heard. 
Can I, uh, can I get you anything? Oh, no. Thank you, ma'am. She came out here for the sunshine. She came running over that day like a snowshoe rabbit to tell me. I suppose 18. Too many ways to go when you're 18 these days. Don't you think? I guess so. We're, um... We're doing all we can. Of course, I... I know that ain't much comfort to you. Do you think that he's the one, the... one that you arrested, that doctor? I don't know. They're bringing him up for questioning now. Well, I don't want to see his face. Too few years left to try to forget a face like that. No, he's, he's just a suspect right now. She used to play with my hats. She liked the big floppy ones. There was one black one she liked. It had a white flower on it. And she'd sit there and she'd look up at me. And she'd say, guess who I am, Grandmama? You know, I could never guess who she was trying to be. Maybe she never really knew who she was trying to be. That may be the truth. If we never know anything more, that may be the truth. Doc, aren't you? A lot of people call doctors Doc. You're that Doc, aren't you? Well, I guess maybe, yeah. No, you hold on to it. You're an intern, huh? Yes. Medical school, still fresh in your mind. What? Anatomy class. Were you good in the subject of dissection? I, look, I told you I didn't do anything like that. You ran away. Why did you run away? They're stiff-necked at the hospital. I didn't want to get involved. Did you love her? Is that why you wrote that on there? I didn't write that on there. It says love doc right there, see? I didn't write that on there. You mean you wouldn't do a thing like that? No, I mean she wrote that on there herself. She had a way of doing strange things like that, like she was trying to force you to love her. And that could be kind of annoying to a young doctor who didn't want to ruin his whole medical career. A pain in the neck, probably. Did you want to get rid of her? No. I didn't really want to see her again, but I didn't want to get rid of her. But you did see her again, the night of January 14th. No! No, I told you, I, I spent that whole night with a student nurse. Oh, yeah. Funny we ain't been able to locate her. You suppose she just uh, disappeared like Elizabeth Short? No. I mean, I don't know what happened to Elizabeth Short. We just saw each other those two times. That was... We never get anything. All right. Tell us about it. I already told you about it. Tell us again. I had to drive to Santa Barbara for an interview at the hospital. It was late. It was foggy. And rather than drive home, I decided to stay over that night. Go on. And I met Beth Elizabeth in a bar. And they had a whole bunch of these things up on the wall. And she wanted one of them, so I bought it for her. How much did you pay for it? Two dollars. You got through the evening kind of cheap, didn't you? Look, it was nothing like that. We, I just... I mean, I just took her back to her house. She was staying at this boarding house. And we said goodnight, and that was it. Nothing else? Didn't she seem to like you? No, I mean, she was friendly, I guess. A strange friendly. Friendly enough so that you decided to see her again. I told you that was an accident. Just an accidental meeting, huh? Look, 
had to go back to Santa Barbara for a second interview. And I stopped in at the bar again. Hoping to meet her. No. Well, she had been calling all over town from the bus station trying to find somebody to pick her up. And I happened to be in the bar when she called. And so I went to the bus station. I drove to the bus station. Hi. You didn't make much sense on the phone. What's the problem? I'm going back down to L.A. with you. Oh, wait a minute. You mean right now? Well, it's not as if I was asking for the moon or something. I just figured after all we meant to each other, I sort of thought... After all we what? Well, all right, Mr. Big. Why don't you just forget you ever met me? That's just fine with me. No, wait a minute. But never mind, I'll no. take the bus down. Wait a minute. Just wait a minute. Look, I'll tell you what. Why don't we go get a drink? And then, uh, I'll take you back down to L.A. later, Okay. Later? Yeah. What's that supposed to mean? What do you think it's supposed to mean? You better say you love me first. <laughs> Come on. Let's go get a drink and we'll talk. First say you love me. Later. I'll tell you later. No, you won't. I tell him right up front. I'm not thinking about getting married. I ain't going to get married. Daddy was so they don't fond like it. of me. Who cares? Out of the Navy. Right away, everybody. Expect you to get married. Oh, I must have. Hurt him awful when I left. Don't even have a chance to get off the boat. I want to lead you straight to the altar. Well, they can't get one in medical school. Try to trap an intern. I was married to a major. He was killed, you know. At least... I'm honest about it. Now, they don't like it. I could be the biggest star in Hollywood. Poof. Whether you know it or not. I know it. Only I won't do all those, all those things they want you to do. Not for all the tea in China. So I'm telling you right up front. Right? You know what they call me at the luncheonette? Let's go. They call me the Black Dahlia. Black Dahlia. Dahlia. Come on. Grandma calls me Betty. Let's go. Go where? We can't stay all night here. Oh, I'm sick. I can't drink so much. I'm sorry about last night. Oh, that's okay. Forget it. 
probably just as well. You don't love me anyway. I'm sorry. You don't understand. You have to love someone to understand. I guess I don't understand. I was afraid of that. Here, let me help no, you. No, never mind. Uh, are you going to be okay? Sure. Uh, a girlfriend's going to meet me here. Don't worry. I can take care of myself. Goodbye. And that's the last I ever saw of her. January 9th, 1947. Victims following movements noted. Mayfair Hotel doorman said identified subject came out of the hotel immediately and walked away carrying black suitcase. Time, 4 p.m. Witness reports girl answering Elizabeth Short's description entered bus station, deposited black suitcase in locker, and left. Time, 4.30. Subject returns to hotel at 5 p.m. Seen over the next several hours, waiting. Waiting. Waiting for who? We'll never know. Miss Hazel George on duty at Western Union desk in Lobby. Between 8 and 9.30 p.m., Elizabeth, several times, walked to the desk, asked if there was any messages for her. There was no telegrams, no messages, no calls, nobody. Cab driver sees Elizabeth come out of the Mayfair at 9.30. She's alone, thinks he has a fare. But she ignores him. It was her, all right. Them are the clothes. No mistake. And the hair, he says. He remembers the beautiful black hair. You're the last pair of human eyes to see her alive. Which way did she go? That's all he knew. Just... Just south on 7th. Yeah, this is what it looked like, all right. I tell people it don't haunt me. But you know, I can still hear Captain Donahoe's voice after all these years, like he was standing beside me. Empty lot over on Norton Avenue. Sounds bad, Harry. Can you take that car? I never even saw it. Yet I've seen it 10,000 times, I imagine. Pulling to that curb, parking. Finest Brown and I both retired now. But we spent more than 20 years tracking down the smallest lead, checking every rumor, trying to solve the Black Dahlia murder. That's enough to haunt anybody. More than 50 people confessed to the murder. Confessing Sam, as Jack Donahoe used to call him. Not a one of them has been able to answer the three secret questions that can be answered only by the real killer. That's why they're still secret. As for Doc, we released Dr. Wallace Coppin after he was cleared by the testimony of a student nurse and other witnesses as to his whereabouts the night of the murder. And Big Shot, Miles Harmoner, whose stolen address book sent nearly a hundred detectives on a search for clues that never turned up. He died soon afterward of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. I still think city editor Jimmy Richardson got the only telephone call from the real killer. 
He never called back, though. And Jimmy died in retirement in 1960. We never found anybody who saw Elizabeth Short the last six days of her life before she was left here on January 15th, 1947. In Los Angeles police files, Black Dahlia murder case is still open. As far as I know, these vacant lots is the only witness to who the real murderer is. Unless, of course, one of you might know something I don't about the Black Dahlia. I guess that haunts me. More in a little. Oh, my God.